Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Complicated Relationships Reddit Stories. Hope you guys are doing well. Now let's see what we have in store for you today. In today's story, the man says, I found my wife first cheating on me with a close friend, so I had him arrested and ghosted her. We'll start with some backstory. My wife and I were raised in a somewhat large town with almost 30,000 residents. We had been acquainted since our early years. We were so dependent on each other. We moved for work to a city a few hours drive away when we turned 18. We got married at 20 and purchased our first home. We found out she was expecting a boy at age 22. Then something terrible happened. About five weeks before she was due to go on maternity leave, a large shelving unit collapsed and crushed her. I was told that both she and our child was gone instantly. Two of her colleagues had also been injured in the accident, one left paralyzed, the other losing his leg after it had to be amputated. The company she was working for had in a cost-cutting measure decided to continue using old shelving that had been written off as unsafe instead of replacing it. It wasn't long after I was told I had a choice on how to proceed with compensation. They wanted to settle out of court to avoid a lawsuit. I, on the other hand, didn't want to settle on that. Fortunately, due to the coverage that it got and involving several politicians, the case was settled quickly in court in roughly three years, in which the payout for all parties was close to 10 times the amount that they had initially offered. At this time, I was still working my job in telecommunications. My mother, bless her soul, had moved in while all this was happening to help me. It was around this time I was offered a promotion, but it involved a lot of travel around the state. After a few months, we settled into a routine of one to two weeks in the city office, one week in my hometown, and one to two weeks visiting the rest of the state. After a year, I decided to buy a house in my hometown, so I wasn't having to stay at my parents' place every week or so that I was home, and I could come and go as I pleased. This is important for later in the story. It is about four years later that our story begins. I had just returned from one of my trips on Friday and was checking in some stuff at my office when Harry, the branch's managing director, walked in. He asked me if I wanted to come to a house party that he was having that evening. It was there that Harry introduced me to Catherine. She was a new hire at the branch where my hometown office was located and was getting to know everyone being new in town. We hit it off immediately. As much of a cliche as it sounds, it was almost as if my late wife was in front of me instead of Catherine. I won't bore you too much with the details, but after two years of dating, we decided to take the next step and she moved into my hometown house. Everything up to this point had been going well. Catherine and my parents got along and my late wife's parents also approved and they were happy that someone could make me happy again. All was going well for close to a year when things began to change. Video calls were cut short. Neighbors would tell me about how a car, described to me like it was Harry's, was always seen parked in the back alley near my house whenever I was away. All signs pointed to her cheating, but she said nothing was happening. She said that Harry would come over occasionally to discuss business, but never stayed the night. I chalked it up to me being paranoid and continued as if nothing was wrong, but there was always this feeling in the back of my mind that something wasn't right. It was close to six months after that I discovered that she had been lying to me. I had just finished closing a rather large contract with a new company and negotiations had wrapped up earlier than I had anticipated. So instead of sticking around for the next few days, I decided to pay for an early flight home and surprise everyone. Fast forward a few hours and I drive into my hometown and down the alley behind my house so that I could get in without being seen and surprise Catherine. Some part of me was curious, however, as to whether this mystery car was there. Sure enough, there was a car that was blocking the back entrance gate. I was confused for a moment, wondering if it had been a neglectful neighbor parking, but realized that it was indeed Harry's car. Pulling up behind his car, I got out and thought it was strange that he was there so late, as she claimed that he always had left by now. As I approached the back of the house, I saw something that made my stomach drop. I froze. Time stopped. 
There was my close friend having S on my kitchen bench with my girlfriend. I didn't know what to do. So many questions were running through my head. Was this real or was I dreaming? Feeling defeated, I turned and left without them seeing me. I sat in my car for what felt like an eternity. I was sad, but the sadness quickly turned into anger. The same kind of anger I felt towards those who were responsible for my wife's demise. As a pacifist, I don't believe in violence. It was then I knew I wanted payback. And what better time to start than right now? I moved my car back up the alley, far enough away from my driveway that I could still see Harry's car and then walked back to the gate where I could see into the house and called her phone. They were still going for it when it rang. They both looked at the caller ID and did a double take when my name came up. I could see that she was considering answering it, but they let it ring out. After a few moments, they were back into it again. I called once again. This time, she did answer. I hung up and made my way back to my car. She called back and asked why I was calling late. I told her that I was about 10 minutes from home and didn't want to scare her walking in. She was shocked but acted happy that I was coming and the call ended very quickly after she said she was going to get up and get changed into something. A few moments later, Harry came peeling through the gate and still half naked, jumped into his car and took off. I smiled a little, knowing the fear that both of them would be feeling from being so close to being caught. I waited a few moments before turning my car into the same place Harry had been moments earlier. The night was fairly uneventful afterward and it wasn't until after she was asleep that I got up and went to my office down the hall. I couldn't sleep, I needed to plan and plan I did. My mother always taught me to be a pacifist and to allow cosmic karma to take its course, but on this occasion, I decided that karma could use a helping hand. I knew that Harry had a habit of substance use. Nothing major, but he kept it very private. I only knew about it accidentally after seeing some Charlie and some other stuff left out in his place but pretended I hadn't seen it when he had made attempts to cover it up. I began calling some of my more unsavory clientele and made a few discreet inquiries into obtaining some samples that they were willing to part with. A few days later, I had a decent enough stash for my plan to work. About a month later, I had friends, including Harry, around for a barbecue night. After making sure that I had sufficiently liquored up Harry, I told him to stay the night and sleep it off. In the early hours of that morning, I took the stuff and an assortment of my personal belongings and placed them at various places around his car, with the bigger stash in his tire well, confident that he wouldn't find them over the next few months as the rest of my plan took effect. I locked the car up and went inside to sleep. A few days later, I staged a break-in by smashing the back pane of my back door into my kitchen and leaving it open before heading back to the city for a flight. I had several messages the moment I landed. One from my panicked mum, who had found the back door smashed open and had called the police. One from Catherine in tears and one from the local police asking me to call. I informed the police that I was away on business and that I would be back the following week to talk with them. While away, I got Catherine to stay with my parents until after I got back and asked my dad to organize one of the local security companies to install a camera system after getting the go-ahead from the police so it would not ruin the scene of the crime. After getting home and doing a thorough check of everywhere, finding that the items I had taken were missing and filing a police report, I had the security company guy talk to Catherine and me through how the cameras and alarm system worked. Then came the question I had been waiting for. The question of what happens if we are doing some business and don't want it recorded. She acted a bit shy asking this question, but I knew exactly the reason she was asking. The camera guy showed on the home computer if we wanted to be doing things without it being recorded, how to stop the recording for certain cameras so that we could protect her modesty. As I was walking him out, I asked him if cameras were turned off and if a notification be sent out just as a security precaution. He came back in and helped me through how to set up email notifications and left shortly after. Now, all I had to do was wait. I needed to make sure that my upcoming plan was legal, that I would not be forced to pay out any money or equity to Catherine. Being the sole benefactor of my late wife's estate, I didn't want to be left with any bad surprises where Catherine could take any of the estates away from me. 
The following week, I was offered a promotion to move back to the city and run the team that I was a part of. This means I wouldn't need to travel as often and be in one location. I said yes and began the process of beginning my transfer, which would take about six weeks. Perfect. More than enough time to gather all my evidence. Upon getting back to my hometown, I began to start in motion the rest of my plan. I asked Harry to approve a vacation for Catherine for a week. I wanted to send her and a friend or two away on a retreat before I made the biggest decision of my life for a second time. He jumped up and gave me a huge hug, congratulating me on being prepared to leap again. I hugged him back tight, but not the way I thought he imagined it at the time. I asked him not to say anything to anyone, as I wanted to make it as big of a surprise as I could. I knew that it would spread like wildfire around the office regardless, but that was my plan. That night, I told Catherine that I had booked her and two friends to go to a tropical spa resort, all expenses paid for a week, and come back to the biggest surprise of her life. She screamed like a kid who had just been told that all the candy in the shop was hers to have. I then told her that I would be in the city preparing for a large client, so I would not be able to come home until Monday, so I wouldn't be able to see her before she left, which seemed to disappoint her but I told her it would be worth it when she returned. What I failed to tell her was that I had decided to take a vacation on the other side of the country, mentally preparing myself for the showdown that was about to erupt the moment she stepped foot on the plane as well as enjoying my first stage of freedom. On Sunday, I flew back and began driving home. Once I got there, I did a quick pass by my house and sure enough, Harry's car was there. I checked the cameras. They are sleeping in my bed. No surprise, honestly, as I had recorded them constantly doing this over the two weeks I had been away. I then made my first call to the police, blocking my caller ID. I told them that I was one of the neighbors and saw someone hanging around in his car in the alley behind my house, occasionally passing something through windows to passing cars while looking into my yard. I was concerned that they were dealing illegal stuff or going to break into someone's property. I gave them his license plate and description. They said they would have someone there in a few minutes, so I thanked them and hung up. I then called Catherine and told her I was about 10 minutes from home and that I knew she was flying out tomorrow but desperately wanted to surprise her. Looking back at the footage now, I laugh at the commotion that I am surprised I didn't hear. In a few short seconds, Harry was half-dressed and flying out the back door to his car. At that point, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect scene. As Harry was peeling away, one of the police cars rounded the corner behind me, saw Harry driving away fast and gave chase. After pulling in, greeting an excited Catherine and doing all the couple things, she fell asleep again. I, on the other hand, couldn't sleep a wink. The next day, she and her friends were bundled into a car. After they drove away, I began to execute my plan. I called my friend who is a mover and said I needed my place packed and moved on Friday. I then began packing Catherine's belongings. Later that day, I got a call from the police for me to come and identify some property they had apprehended from a suspect the previous night that fit the description of the property I had reported stolen. I was happy that my plan for Harry had worked well and I replied that I would be there shortly to collect it. By this stage, the town was buzzing with news. Events in my hometown don't stay secret for long. Harry was disgraced and promptly fired, and our respective bosses on behalf of the company extended a formal apology to me during the week. That night, I went to my parents' house and told both mine and my wife's parents what had happened, omitting certain details, and that I was moving back to the city after being promoted, but Catherine wouldn't be a part of it. They were pretty upset initially that I hadn't let them know what was going on, but were happy that I was handling everything maturely and hadn't sunk to their level. On Friday afternoon, the real estate agent put my house on the rental market. I packed some things into my car, drove to my parents' place and said goodbye before the drive. Before leaving, I went to Becky's house. Becky had been one of my wife's closest friends growing up. She was the only other person who knew what was happening. 
Without her help, I wouldn't have been able to organize everything as quickly as I had. I gave Becky a large manila folder with my gathered evidence of the cheating, as well as the letter and a few other legal documents from my attorney stating that she was ordered not to contact me and the details of how to access her belongings located at the storage unit I had rented out. On Sunday, I woke up to several missed calls, voice and text messages. Turns out, Catherine had come home early after being alerted to something being afoot in town, only to find an empty house and a for rent sign out at the front. Freaking out, she had gone to my parents, who closed the door on her the moment that they answered, forcing her to call everyone until she managed to somehow be contacted by Becky and told that she had a package for her. I was told that she didn't take too well to that, as I fully well knew at that point from the numerous angry text and voice messages from her accusing me of setting up Harry, of being deceitful, etc. I was worried that she might show up at my front door, but nothing ever happened. In conclusion, I must say that Harry is looking at a few months in prison as it's his first offence and could be out soon. I don't regret doing what I did to him as he knew both my wife and I growing up and knew how hard it was for me to pick up my life after she passed away. As for what happened to Catherine, I have been told that she moved to another state just recently after being transferred. From the people I have spoken to today, she was put mainly on administrative duties before her transfer, as there was quite a bit of backlash after the rumor mill made its way around town. And that's the end of the story. Thank you so much for listening and do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified when we upload the next story. Take care.